farming, gardening, gardening, farming. Some people ask, what is the difference? I mean, they both involve growing crops and plants that require water, that require nutrients, and that require sunlight, right? But there's a couple of differences between gardening and farming. For example, gardening can be fun. For a lot of people around the world, it is a hobby that they do during their spare time. Mm, they have a lot of fun gardening. But farming, farming is hard work and it can be full of risks. And gardeners, they're mostly doing it at home or some other place and they're usually doing it for their own consumption. Farmers produce food on a large scale for sale to the public. And as we say here on the Mondo Farms channel, farming is a business. Just over three years ago, we started growing vegetables here on this piece of land. And from the very beginning, we've been trying to make some money from it. We've been trying to become farmers rather than gardeners. We've tried all sorts of crops as we've been learning the art of farming. It's been quite a journey with some tough lessons about what crops to grow, how to grow them, and even when to grow them. Some crops have been a total disaster and we've lost some serious money. But there's one crop that usually puts a smile on our face and relieves some of the pressures. I'm talking about this stuff. Something that I once heard someone describe as orange gold. I'm talking about carrots. Yes, this is gonna be a crop story. A crop story about growing carrots. And as usual with our crop stories, we're gonna start with a little bit of background information about this important and popular vegetable. Then we're going to do a backstory and look at how we actually grew one of our recent crops of carrots here at Mondo Farms. And then finally, we're going to take a quick look at the harvesting process and how we actually get it ready for market. Oh, and by the way, we really have to talk about something that's been confusing people around the world for a long time. How do you describe more than one carrot? It might seem simple, you think, but as we all saw here in Zambia on that video that went viral a few months ago, things can get a bit confusing when there are many. Stay with us. Greetings from the farm. I hope you're well. It's so good to have you back with us again here on the Mondo Farms channel. My name is Chisha Folotia. It is a Sunday afternoon and I'm sitting down here on Riverside One surrounded by a sea of these beautiful green things you see here. Carrots, as we said. One of the things that amazes me about growing vegetables is how much you can get out of a tin like this. This is a 500 gram tin of Kuroda carrot and a tin like this was almost enough to plant everything that we've grown here at Riverside One uh, this season. We are talking about almost half a hectare. We opened a tin like this, we planted and then we had to come back in and open a second tin and as you can see there's still quite a little bit left in there this is what carrot seed looks like small tiny beautiful stuff Carrots are a popular root vegetable that are widely cultivated all around the world. They belong to a family of plants that includes parsley, celery and dill. The name of the family is not only hard to spell, but also hard to pronounce. Wow, I'll be honest and say that I had to Google how to pronounce it. And here's my effort at trying to pronounce that word. A-P-I-S-E. A-P-I-S-E. <laughs> I know we always talk about the taxonomy of plants whenever we do our crop story. But let's be honest, how many times in ordinary conversation will you ever have to bring up that word and use the word A-P-I-S-E? or something, something like that anyway. Carrots are believed to have originated in Central Asia and were initially cultivated for their aromatic leaves and seeds rather than for their roots. But over time, people began to selectively breed carrots to develop larger, sweeter, and more palatable roots. Today, there are many carrot varieties available, each with its own unique characteristics in terms of shape, size, and flavor. You can get carrots in different colors, such as purple, yellow, white, 
and red. But here in Zambia and across most of Southern Africa, we prefer our carrots to have a vibrant orange color. That's the only carrot that I ate growing up and it's what I know and it's what we grow for our market. The variety of carrots that we prefer to grow here on our farms is called Kuroda. It is a heat tolerant variety which can be planted all year round. It is widely preferred variety due to its sweet, natural flavor and radiant orange color. It grows nice and big with big shoulders. This is what Zambian customers prefer. In this part of the video, I'm going to share with you what we call the backstory. And it's the story of a crop of carrot that we grew down here on Riverside 1, blocks A, B and C earlier this year. It's all been harvested and what you see behind me here is its succession crop down here on Riverside 1, blocks D, E and F. Our backstory starts in April. By that time, we had a crop of eggplants that we had planted during the rainy season. It had given us a whole lot of harvest. It had survived the flooding that we had down here on Riverside One during February. And by the end of March, it was now, you know, finished. My harvests were, were literally uh, becoming almost insignificant. So we had to take it down. And then we had to take out all the old eggplant, eggplant and plants, crops, trees, bushes. I'm not sure what the word is. Anyway, we had to clear the field and then we had to get started with making beds for the new crop that was to come, the carrots. Yeah, carrots. So down here at Riverside One, um, where we uh, continue doing our land prep for uh, carrot, and so we've done the fertility trenches, um, at a spacing of uh, at a width of uh, 50 centimeters and 20 centimeters deep. So. We've done block ABC, making the fertility trenches. And now um, we are composting. As you can see, our man Jack is getting compost from uh, one of our outdoor compost that we made last year. So it was hidden here. very very rich and decomposed with good organic matter which is just good for the crop that we're planting um, the carrots so wait Jackson bang on my one reason in I'm getting my fakira recharge if my drops Say Richard, Tima Fakako. It is a drenching yesterday, na Richard, ka. So Richard, Tima Paye. Muga virekere ra so mujua no makaro tivemba kudia. Ina piye. Tene kache de tindi tina senze sa mastok sa medici ay. Yezi na bure ya sa ya last of last year. Mausus, Side one, yeah, block B. I'm a 
Katamba, Log B, Faka Composti. So, Mugana Kinzo and Ivy, I am a Faka. Set up ya. Apo set up even gangale ya Yangale pakati na pakati zone Yeah So because wawo na mabedi ya meta kupanga hapa Si jamete nzo chaya hodi na liosha nga na Na manja Hapa tuzi nga plant So set up the side wawo na vaya chinja na mabedi so plan you fuck a three line which I need because I'm a bit it is which I am a 40 so I'm a man in my 60 my 60 carrots grow best in loose well-drained soil that is free of rocks clumps and other debris that can cause the roots to become misshapen they prefer a sandy loam soil that allows for good root development. The ideal soil pH for carrots ranges between 6.0 and 6.8. In terms of climate, carrots thrive in a cool season conditions with temperatures between 15 degrees and 21 degrees, but they can be grown all year round. So the first beds that we got ready were the ones on block A. And we decided, mm, let's just plant block A and then we'll come and uh, pre finish preparing blocks B and C. There were two reasons why we did that. The first one is money, I'm a half, the cheddar. The farm is a business. Every single week we have to spend money on something, whether it's fertilizer, whether it's diesel, whether it's the, the, the crop protection and, and all of that. And of course, at the end of the month, we have to come up with salaries for the workers. So the sooner we can get a crop into the ground, the sooner we will be able to harvest it. The other important reason we decided to plant A first and then come in and do B and C later was to give ourselves a certain level of succession because with carrots and crops like that that you can only harvest once and we'll talk about that a little bit more later you don't want everything coming out at the same time so you want to plant a little bit plant a little bit so that you have a certain level of succession how do we plant carrot here at Mondo Farms we use our vegetable seed planter now this is a very simple mechanized little machine that we bought from Saro Agro now Saro Agro as many of you will know here in Zambia is Zambia's leading uh, distributor and dealer of agriculture urbanization they sell big things like uh, tractors and combine harvesters and boom sprayers one day i want a boom sprayer man of all the things i want in life i want a boom sprayer i used to want a range rover now i want a tractor and a boom sprayer <laughs> anyway saro agro also sells simple pieces of mechanization like this that really help to plant your seed evenly and quite effectively and quite quickly. Here it is in action. So we're now down here uh, on the side one. And uh, this is block A of our uh, riverside one. And now, after we've calibrated our machine, we've uh, filled up our hoppers with the carrot seed. As um, we set it with three hoppers having seed. And now we're starting our planting. So these are our three lines of carrots and our three drip lines will pass through in between.
onto the other concrete after finishing uh, the first one. Um, so after our planting here at Riverside 1 uh, of the carrot, our drip irrigation system has been put in place and uh, what's left here is um, turning on the water. The guys were flashing the main lateral lines and now what will be left is flashing the main drips so that we start the irrigation here. So one other thing that um, we mentioned earlier was the one, two, three lines and the two drip uh, lines that uh, the, that we will get on either side. Then um, the first step that we're gonna do is um, lime our soils with uh, the micro soluble micronized lime. So we didn't do that earlier on because um, if we the planter that we were using. Um, it gets clogged. We're having problems with uh, distribution. So we've noticed that in moist soils, the planter doesn't do a good job. So we planted in advance in the loose, nice loose variable soils with, uh, with the planter. Then now we're coming in with the micronized lime and also other soluble um, uh, aducans like uh, the insecticides and uh, fungicides that we uh, we apply at uh, planting. So the advantage is the micronized lime can also be applied at planting, before planting and after planting. So we are okay using it. It's for these guys, the caterpillars. Hence we get to apply the uh, insecticide insecticide we use here is a biological insecticide recharge from agrifocus it's been working well for us over the years and now uh, we count on it now carrot takes a while to germinate it's not like you can just plant it and the following day you start seeing it coming out of the ground i don't know what it is about carrot but it takes about two to three weeks before you start seeing these little things shooting out of the out of the ground and during that time a farmer like ourselves is pulling out there and goes what is happening where what's going on uh, no 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 it, it, it was nothing like that at all nothing like that at all nothing like that Riverside one, block A. Time back water in my name, my drips. My carrots. And all you can do during that thing is to keep the bed moist. And we do that with regular, but light, 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 light watering. Just keeping it going, keeping it going, because you gotta wake up those little seeds and say, hey guys, it's time to fulfill your destiny. It's time to make Mondo Farms some money. <laughs> finally, 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 the seeds germinate. Now, when your seeds germinate and you get your little carrot seedlings coming up out of the ground, that's when the real work starts. Mm -hmm. The real work starts in protecting it, especially protecting it against weeds. I'm telling you, carrot is one of those vegetables that we can only describe as a weak soldier. It has very little resistance to weeds. And this year down here on the floodplain on uh, Riverside One, we've had a, a lot of weeds. So we have to constantly keep weeding it all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
in church story at China. I can't hear you. 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 So we're down here at Riverside One, uh, and this is uh, Block A from Riverside One, where we have our carrot crop that was planted here um, a week ago, and now we're getting germination. It's not quite clear, but these are the plants. This is a weed. And this is carrot. Weed. Carrot. This is carrot. The next to it is a weed. Now, our ladies are here to remove these weeds so that we easily identify which one is carrot and which one is a weed. To the riverside one block B, quantity drenching a dynamic na venturi. Up and the set up here to venturi riverside one. So I'm going to drink the Riverside 1B in a dynamic. So we're down here at uh, Riverside 1, up dock A, 1A, where we have our Kuroda carrots that were planted on the 15th of uh, April. Now, they're looking very, very good, taking shape. Guys, I'm here picking up weeds, and uh, in here we've got casualties. This grasshopper. So we sprayed here um, cypermethrin, which helps uh, reduce another uh, cutting insects. So we are cutting carrots. Didn't like that, so we came here and sprayed, and now we're having lots of uh, insects that are, that are dying. And our carrot looks very healthy, but we're losing out. Riverside one, yeah, block A. So seven zero ma red dizzy yesterday kucha manu eating So 
And of course, we also have to protect it from all the insects that ones that like to come and eat it. I mean, look, you can see a beautiful grasshopper going hop, 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 hop. That grasshopper. Kanshi, Kanshi, Kanshi Mulwani. That guy wants to come along and eat our tender little carrot seedlings. He wants to deprive my family of his income. <laughs> oh, not only do you get insects coming along to try and eat the little seedlings, you also get diseases that try to come along and make them sick. And we call this very important part of crop husbandry the crop protection period. And we've got to be up on our game, making sure that our little seedlings get a chance in life. To the Riverside One Block C, this spring on my east side, my many bedrooms are series of spring. So I spring and bag my few things. So I'm going to put them in the bag. 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 So I'm going to put them in the bag. So I'm going to put them in the bag. So I'm going to put them in the bag. So I'm going to put them in the bag. Side one, block C. Carrots. Look, eh. <laughs> Coming down to Riverside One to have a look at what we have down here and what we have down here is our beautiful field of carrots. Look at that. No, I can't be no carrot thing. When are those kids coming? The day after tomorrow. They'll come and wait. Don't you need something for them? Last time they planted. Last time I'm shang get out of quality flower. So this time. I'm going to go to the deep channel. I'm going to share it. I'm going to go to the deep channel. 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 I'm going to go to the How are they? Anything to pull out? Hey, many carrots. Muti tan. Kosala. What happens after this? Pada ikaran ti, macam tak something cemu tu, lo. So apa ikari? Naga yang ganas cemu tu, nak aku kau white. Then inga tiapnya, iman kalau reja oil orange, white ini saya tabuan jazim. Yeah. Inga china tu, aku tak ahead topa. Macam tu muka mau buat apa sah face tu mau mikir aku. Oh yang mau buat kira mana? Just like what the onion is doing by ripping. Uh -huh. So it, it's expanding down here. Because it's cool. So it's 
starting to show here. To show the head. Yes. So your carrot is growing and it's getting established. Things are looking good. And then you start noticing one thing, that the carrots are very close together. They are literally uh, squeezing each other because that's how the seeds were put. That happens especially if you plant them, drilling them by seeds. And what most farmers have to do at that stage is they do what's called thinning. Thinning basically means sacrificing every other carrot or so because you want to give the carrot enough space for that chi root, that chi chuba, that chi, that chi orange thing. Orange, I said, not blue, green, red, or purple, or white. Please, I, tambelana, tambelana. Yes, you want to give space for that chi orange thing to grow and have space rather than it being squeezed, squeeze, squeeze. It is something that we often do with a lot of root vegetables. So you go in there and you thin them out, you thin them out. I have to be really careful which of my fingers I drop down, but I'm gonna drop this one down. And then you have this one left. And yeah, okay, let's leave these two because what we're trying to do is achieve around about a five centimeter spacing if we're growing a big carrot like Kuroda up to full maturity. Oh, let's not even talk about baby carrots and thinking that you can grow a normal carrot and then harvest it at the baby stage and then call it a baby carrot. <laughs> no, don't do that, don't do that. There are special types of carrot varieties that are meant to be grown as baby carrots. But I digress, so we're talking about carrot spacing. Carrot spacing is very important because as you said, it gives the, the, the carrot enough space for the root to grow. When you use a planter like we do, one of the special tips and tricks that I saw somewhere on a YouTube channel, I also watch YouTube videos to learn my farming just as you're doing here. And the special trick that I saw was that in the plant hopper there, when you put your carrot seeds in there, you mix in some sand. So that really helps you to get some very good spacing. Fortunately, 2023, Riverside One carrot crop, spacing hasn't really been a problem and a lot of our carrots have had enough space for them to grow well. Comment. This is good. Small. Yeah. Yeah. Our issue now is to say if we're gonna are we harvesting it this week? We give it another week. We can give it another week. Okay. So yes. see. So here we've done these beds, block D and block E. Yes, yeah. Then we're moving into these other ones. We had had that discussion where we said we're gonna come and succession this guy and plant these two later. And we were debating how much space there is because of the river curve going back in. So I can cut last. Because this is much smaller than this. Is this? Yeah, oh, what is it? What is it? Nice. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Ooh. 
we're saying this one, these two are, are much smaller than this. And then finally, it was time for our first harvest. So the team comes in, they pull out the carrots, and we take them to market. Smiles all around, right? So we're done here at Riverside One. Uh, look, A of the carrots. Then, uh, in our field today, we start with our first cut harvest of the carrots. And now we have the uh, Team going in and uh, getting to choose the big guys that are ready for harvest. It's an interesting process. This is a beautiful big guy. there then from here we're going with them uh, up on top where we have our sinks for washing so we can get them ready for the market So we're now in the second part of our uh, carrots harvesting where we start cutting off the vegetative part, the leaves and um, getting the, the roots. So these roots that being packed in the crate, we them to do the sinks for washing. But all you know, we're happy with our best cut harvest and the size of our carrots. Okay, I have to be honest here. Our first harvest from any of our crops is never that great. We call it the first cut harvest and it's something that we have to do. Number one, there are crops that are ready to go to market you can't exactly leave them in the ground or on the tree uh, waiting for the others to catch up and number two we generally generally tend to plant OPV because OPV seed is quite reasonable and we haven't really got into the hybrid stuff quite yet now with OPV seeds one of the characteristics that you tend to find in it is something called non-uniformity non-uniformity means they grow like the way humans Human beings grow. There's tall people, there's short people, there's big people, there's people who are shaped like Coca-Cola bottles, and there's people that are shaped like carrots. Do you know what I mean, right? <laughs> so anyway, we do the first cut harvest so that we can get the big guys that are ready and good to go out of the way, and that leaves room and space and sunlight and nutrients for all of the other ones coming behind them. Two weeks later, we were able to come back to Riverside 1, Block A, and uh, yeah, we had a proper, proper, proper harvest. That was much, 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 much better. It was something that my late grandmother's people from the Northern Cape city of Kimberley would describe as lekker. By the way, that, that means very good. I've been told to be, putting subtitles and saying what do things actually mean by <laughs> some of our viewers in the States and other places. <laughs> anyway, it was a lekker harvest, man, lekker.
kamanje chipa step 2 kwa nicho sama leaves kwa carrot ingredient kwa carrot kwa carrot sababu ni tafaka market then matia potassium hapa mimi hapa Uh, we are here at uh, Riverside, where we are the third stage of uh, carrot harvesting. And uh, this is the cleaning, the selecting. First of all, where we remove these foam guys. Then uh, from there, we put them up in the, in the sinks for, for washing. So the ladies are the ones that are in charge and we've got uh, John who's giving a hand in terms of packing in the, in the sacks like we have here. So what's left here is um, sewing it up on top and weighing the sack. Uh, so we're done here at was at one. Um, this is uh, block A, where we have our uh, carrots. And uh, over here, we have our block B and C over there. So we did our second harvest in here. And uh, what's left here will be the last. We took out most of the, or harvested most of the carrots in here. What we have left is the small little guys. This size. <laughs> And, uh, and the second, uh, in the second block, which is uh, block B, we still have uh, a lot in here. Comparing the two, we have a small. Uh, to medium and this is in the uh, second block the second uh, block was planted in the same day as the uh, third one which is block C so what we have here is what we have in the in box here as well. You can just see from here. Medium sized. Here too. Okay, by next week, uh, we should have some good growth in terms of uh, uh, the roots growing uh, bigger uh, from medium to large. Uh, Riverside one, our uh, blocks ABC. Um, this is what's left of our carrot crumbs. This is what's left after having a uh, good harvest from there are three blocks. 
Now, what's left is the guys that were very, very small. These guys you can see ripping the ground. You know, the guy at the bottom is a very big guy. If you've been watching the Mondo Farm channel for a while, you will know that we grow different types of vegetables, especially what we call fruiting vegetables. Things like the cucumber that we had here on uh, Riverside 1 DEF just a year ago, you remember? And we also grow a lot of eggplant. And with fruiting vegetables, you grow the thing and for weeks, for months, three, four, five, six months, you're just going back to the same crop and just harvesting, harvesting every single week. It's wonderful. I love fruiting vegetables. But as the Bible says, man cannot live on bread alone. Farmers cannot plant the same thing over and over again. They have to practice a very important agronomic thing called crop rotation. And part of crop rotation means you, you, plant, you plant and grow on the same ground different types of crops. There's, there's all sorts of reasons that lots of people will talk about on other YouTube videos and I'm sure in some of your other farm training. But it means that every once in a while, we've got to come back in with a rooting vegetable. That's why when we had eggplant before, we had cucumber before, we come back in with a rooting vegetable. Hint, the rooting vegetables go down into the ground and do different things than the roots of the fruiting vegetables. But the problem with root vegetables is you can only harvest them once. After you go through and you get what you can and you get the, the crates and crates of orange gold that you saw during our harvest video. You've got to plant some more. So after we had done blocks A, B, C, we came back in and we started planting blocks D, E, F right here. And we shall be starting our harvest. I think the first harvest, first cut harvest coming from here is scheduled for tomorrow. And you know, when you see a farmer dancing like this, then you know that, yeah, there's a harvest coming and a little bit of coinage going into the bank account and you get one of the most important sounds in modern life. It's the sound of the SMS from the bank going, bidi bidi. <laughs> So remember earlier when I was talking about a tin of carrots, 500 gram tin of carrots like this actually being enough to cater for almost 0.5 of a hectare? Whoa, it is one of the most amazing things about why we choose to grow carrot. Not only has it got a fair price on the market, not only is it easy to grow, but it is also very reasonably cost effective. You can see where I'm going with this. Some of the vegetables that we grow here on the farm, the seed is quite expensive. And some of them, you don't even plant the seed. You've got to take the seed to a grower who adds his growing fee, and then you get a seedling coming in at maybe one, two, two kwacha or something like that. But with carrots, how am Wendy with carrots? A tin like this, very reasonably priced, and it goes a really long way, which really, really, really helps us with our bottom line here on the farm. Because remember, as we keep saying, farming is a business. So we've got to keep the monies coming in at a reasonable thing and to keep ourselves in the black, as they say. By the way, I think that expression, a business being in the black, is one of the only times that the word black is used in a positive manner uh, in the English language. There's not a lot. Anyway, I digress. Basically, uh, carrots are cost effective and we're going to keep growing them. We've got another crop of carrot that we're going to be growing on uh, Riverside One in December during the rain season mm. so that we, we keep we hit that market at that time so we're already planning october what we'll be growing at that time remember as i keep saying again farming is a business how many times can i say farming is a business maybe it's because my friend panuka has just released a book called farming is a business i'm all farming is a business vibe <laughs> more on that soon Ah, 
I'm gonna continue talking about this tin again. Now this tin is Kuroda Carrot and it's by a brand called K2, which stands for Klein Karoo, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful South African uh, vegetable seed company. They do a lot of good stuff and we grow a lot of their cultivars here at Mondo Farms. It's one of the ones that is our go-to. We plant their eggplant and we're gonna keep growing it as much as we can. As you do your farming journey, you will find certain type of seeds from certain companies that you like, that you can get a hold of at this price or whatever, and you tend to stick with us. And this is one, Klein Karoo, that we really highly recommend. They've got a wonderful marketing team. Whenever you have a challenge with anything or you need to talk to them about something, you can give them a call. They've got very good, strong cultivars that grow well. Our favorite, favorite, favorite eggplant um, comes in from, from Klein Karoo and we've I've done other eggplants before, but mm, we really try and stick to Klein Karoo as much as possible. So the K2 brand, I'll, let me show it close to the camera, K2. That is a brand that uh, we, bro we really strongly recommend here on the Mondo Farms channel. So as I was researching this video, one of the things that came up was I wasn't quite sure whether or not we're supposed to say carrot or carrots when we're talking about more than one carrots. Uh, the question of plurality is a thing and as we always say, the English language demu nove. It turns out according to the internet that the answer is not that quite that simple. I even came across a reference saying carrot is a countable noun as in one carrot, a carrot, the carrot, six carrots, no carrots, blue carrots, many carrots, etc. So, as you say, I don't know whether we should be saying carrot or whether we should be saying carrots. How were you brought up using that word? Let me know in the comments below. Today's video has been about carrots. It is not a glamorous crop, it's not a crop, it's not exciting, it's not whatever it is, but we're vegetable farmers. If we wanted to be doing something glamorous and exciting, we may have done something maybe like, you know, like open a record company. <laughs> you know the history. <laughs> so here on our, farm, our our channel, the Mondo Farms channel, we share our farming journey. We talk about the type of crops we grow and we share with you how we grow them. We are all about inspiring uh, the farmers of tomorrow, educating the farmers of tomorrow. Let me say that, let me say that properly. We're all about inspiring the farmers of tomorrow, yes, and uh, educating and refreshing the memories of the farmers of today. And who knows, one day we may even reinvigorate a former farmer. One of those guys who said, ah, farming, farming is for fools. <laughs> and after watching our videos, they might want to come back into farming and, you know, help us to produce food for the ever growing population. That's one of our main things. We've got to keep the food production up and going. My name is Chisha Fortia. I'm not a person who is like a trained agronomist or anything. I came here to farm three years ago. We farmed all sorts of things, had all sorts of adventures uh, down here on the outskirts of Chongwe, which is about 50 kilometers east of the capital of Lusaka. And we're going to continue doing all sorts of farming and then sharing that, that journey with you. If you want to continue watching some of our videos, the easiest way to do that is to press the subscribe button. And if you press the bell icon, ding, then YouTube will let you know when another video comes along. If you've got other people that you need or you really want them to watch this video, then please go ahead, press the share button and then share it with them using one of the social media channels, your Facebooks or your WhatsApp or even this other thing that I keep talking about that I've never ever seen called Telegram. We always like hearing from you in the comments. Uh, people will share their experiences with us. We ask you as always not to make too much of technical questions. You should always consult your local agronomy, agronomists wherever you are in the world. I'll be heading back to Lusaka soon. 
It's been good seeing you. Take care and I'll see you soon on the Mondo Farms channel. Shalenipo. Bye-bye.